All right, guys. So the name of the movie is Ravenous. Let's check it out. Da 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 da. Ba da da da. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. He that fights with monsters. Anonymous, eat me. Guys, the fact that it started out saying "eat me," I'm gonna go ahead and guess this is probably like a comedy. Captain John Boyd. Okay, the Mexican American kerfuffle. All right. Guys, that food does not look appetizing. And I'm kind of with him right now in not eating it. You're no hero, Boyd. What? Is his name Boyd? Really? Well, all right. I'm no hero. Apparently. All right, so the movie is taking place in the, the 1800s. Um, I recall it being like in the 1840s, obviously, right? And um, it was about kind of like uh, where Texas thought like the border ended. America was like, bro, it is definitely the Rio Grande, right? And Mexico was like, nah, bro, it is the like Nucius River or something like that, guys. It was just like, bro, you guys started a kerfuffle over this, guys? Yeah. This place thrives on tedium. Well, that's a new way to so open a I walnut, bro. You have a hobby, Boyd? Swimming. Reich. He's our soldier. Well, why would you do that to yourself? Like, why would you purposely put yourself in ice water? I mean, maybe there's like a reason for it. I couldn't, I couldn't. Why would you do that though? I just don't really see why someone would want to do that. Um, like I know growing, growing up in New York, they had like a, like a polar bear club type of thing where guys would go swimming like in the ocean during the winter. And I never understood that neither, right? I just don't understand why you would purposely put yourself into pain. I don't know. I don't know. Like hypothermia is, is a thing. So I don't, I don't. All right. What did you do then? I played dead. I mean, then I guess it was a good thing that he played dead, right? For the most part, right? I mean, um, yeah, he froze, but he was the last one alive. So I get it. I mean, you should be deleted with your unit, but if you don't have to be deleted, then why be deleted? What happened? Guys, I feel like that may have been in his imagination. And the reason why I say I think that maybe is because, like, first of all, he's obviously gone through a lot, right? This is the main character here. He looks at the window and he sees someone and then he looks back again and then they're gone. So I think that that may be fake. Well, never mind, I guess. Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry, my name's Calhoun. Okay, Calhoun. How long were you out there? Three months. Bro, definitely get the man some pants. All right, <laughs> we should immediately. Lord, you should have seen me three months ago. I said no food. I didn't say there was nothing to eat. Do you understand? I said no food. Do you understand? I'm trying to understand. I Nothing suppose I owe you gentlemen a story. Oh, yeah, yeah, please, please. Feel up to it. Oh, yeah. Explain. Dig up, but you know there's no real nourishment in that. Right. We remain then. famished. 
Bro, is this man about to say he ate people, bro? Is that, is that what he's about to say right now? I don't know. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't have. I must say, when I stepped inside that cave, the smell of meat cooking. Okay. I think the cave's about three or four days' march from here. What is it, George? Wendigo. Um, Wendigo basically is like a, like a being, a creature, uh, it comes from the Algonquin, like, language group, right? Uh, they believe that there's like a creature that becomes a creature by kind of being around taboo type of things, right? And if you were to encounter Wendigo, you yourself would become Wendigo. So you basically want to, it's like a... Um, a much older way to say, for the most part, if we just take away all the mysticism, um, if you do bad things, like really, like truly terrible taboo things like consuming another human being, right? <laughs> By definition, you become Wendigo, right? Because you are engaging in that type of activity. I know the story is because my grandmother used to basically tell the story of Wendigo, right? My great grandmother. Uh, you can easily control the outcome of your children by saying, if you do these absolutely terrible and horrific things, Wendigo will come for you and you will become Wendigo. You will basically be the force of evil on this planet, right? Um, it is used in like Native American households to, um, again, control the outcome of their children that's not really a native language to if they're in california then that means they basically brought him from the east coast i would say northeast coast uh it's an old indian myth from the north Wendigo. Mushaki. yeah the north georgia people don't still do that do they i mean the premise of it is not wrong though right once you kind of open yourself to absolutely terrible things, your limitations on what you actually will do in life now is pushed all the way to that crazy end of things, right? Um, so now that kind of can become a norm. So you really will be a terrible person because now your limits are, instead of you being here and living within, you know, said contract of socials, the social contract, right? Um, you now are, on that spectrum, your base is now changed. So yeah, they're not wrong. They're just putting it in like a, a mystical, like spiritual type of way, right? So if you doubt him, he should be doubting your religion. Because again, it's the mystical, spiritual side of things, right? Just take it and, and move on, sir. Like man eats the body of Jesus Christ every Sunday. Right, perfect. Well put, sir. You can't you can't talk terribly about someone's religion and then you have a religion. That's weird. Hmm. Oh, and now he's correlating the fact that well, when he was kind of buried with the other guys, the uh, the viscous fluid was basically dripping into his mouth, down his throat. Um, maybe this is the reason why he also could not eat the, the steak in the beginning. He was like, hey, I don't want this. I want something else. Maybe maybe he's Wendigo, um, the, the main character. And also him, right? Maybe they're both Wendigo, potentially. Just by proximity. Oh. 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 What's the matter? Bro, were you lick? What the? Bro, were you literally licking this man's wounds trying to consume? Bro, get this man out of here, all right? It's time for this man to go, all right? That's weird. What? He was, he was licking. Bro, look at your lips. Don't say no. It's on your lips, bro. He was licking me! <laughs> Mr. Cajon? Yes. You come outside, Wendigo. Yup. Yup. Shut up! Bro, stop talking. Bro, we need to find something that proves this story, guys, because as of right now, I'm uh, 
so I'm conflicted on if I believe this guy or not. Bro. jovial music just come from guys like i'm trying to take this thing seriously but then like there are certain like bits and like pieces of like comedic relief that i find super intriguing what we just encountered it's like it's like they're playing with my emotions right so the, the music itself that was obviously super cinematic and theatrical that was just sucking me into what was exactly happening right it was like this droning like heartbeat sounding like piece of i don't know instrumental that was happening right while all this drama was unfolding just to end it right with some like comedic relief guys you, you guys are trolling this is a you, this is a troll now what's interesting is that we're about 45 minutes into the movie now um and it almost seems like this is the end of the movie so what exactly was going to transpire? Like, is there going to be like this huge, like, like, like arc or something, guys? It feels like this is the end of the movie. So this is the second time he's going to basically make it from for being basically a coward. But in this instance here, is he is he a coward? I don't know. He can't do anything. His leg is broken. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that he's probably gonna have to eat the other soldier to survive. Then he's gonna he himself is then gonna turn into the Wendigo and then they're gonna like have like a like a Wendigo battle or something, guys. So okay, so basically I have no idea how long um he was there for, right? I see that it's still snowing, so obviously he wasn't that long, but I have no idea how he's actually walking on a break like that on the leg break like that guys but um all right let's continue like even with that limp i don't think that he'd be able to put any weight on it like any weight it looks like he did like take a piece of his leg with him or something for like a snack or something guys sign of a sign of anyone not colonel hart's rescue party not the original party there's nothing inside Windigi is the stuff of campfires. Would you stop squirming, Lindis? I know I mispronounced it. I'm making a point. Bro, take him to the body you hid and the other guy didn't know about. That would probably help, at least. But you cut a piece of his leg out. So, wait. That, that, no, no, no. That would, probably wouldn't work, bro. It probably wouldn't work because you literally ate him. Colonel Ives. Colonel Captain Boyd. How's the leg? What? Bro. Really? It's him, sir. It's who? Oh, God. It's him, sir. Who yeah, it's him. It's him. That killed him all, sir. Yeah. That was him. No, Major that was Knox, him. Look at him. Sir, Major Knox was here. You've tasted it. Felt its power. Yet you're resisting. Morality. Yep. Always jogs the memory, don't you think? Generally. But bro. Remember the energy? It's life! Boy, I'm putting you under arrest. Okay, so why is the woman protecting the the bad guy? Alright? Is there something that we do not know? <laughs> Cause like I don't I don't get that. Or maybe she thinks that Boyd is crazy. Maybe. And he's just like, no, she's like, no, impossible. But guys, there's something we're missing, I think. Bro, he's gone. Like, everything in the world tells me that he is gone right now. And the other guy ate him or something already, guys. 
Boy, how do you get on the roof, bro? You're blaming the wrong person. You're blaming the wrong person, bro. Bro, by the time you get back, no one's gonna be alive. Oh. <laughs> All right, so for some reason they're showing you the sword uh, and it's pointing directly at him. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that he's probably the next one. If symbolism has anything to do with what's, ha what's actually happening here, he's going to be next and he's going to die by that sword, guys. Because you can kind of see like the, the imprint on the wall that there most likely was another sword there. And the other one is missing. Where is it at? Contribute. Perhaps later you might contribute, meaning that, bro, you're going to end up in that pot, bro. Just, he, he's just keeping you fresh for now. Let me know. I, I was watching you the whole time. You'll be quiet about pleasing the horses, boy. There's someone else, guys. There is literally someone else. Hello, Boyd. What? But also, hello. Bro, I don't understand. So you're gonna kill me? No. no it's lonely being accountable. <laughs> Tough making friends. <laughs> not like you, Boyd. You know, it's not courage to resist me, Boyd. Not really. Not for him specifically, because he's kind of already one. He's just um, abstaining for the most part. You die. Oh. This is the part of the movie where I forecast. All right, so basically what I'm thinking is, obviously he is going to consume this soup and um, he's going to become one of those guys. Absolutely. Fully, full-blown, right? Because obviously this, uh, this soup is going to cure him. Ben Franklin once said, eat to live. Guys, this whole situation is live weird. To eat. It's creepy, guys. <laughs> oh, they trapped him, guys. Just go ahead and do it, bro. Just go ahead and do it. What's funny is now the the main character looks healthy now. <laughs> he doesn't look gray. Huh. Are you to be trusted? You know you can't trust him right now. Of course not. <laughs> exactly. At least he's honest. At least he's honest, guys. Hmm. Yeah, he's definitely stronger. Because if you look at the beginning of the movie where you saw him with the walnuts, he had to, like, he required a book to open it. Now he's just, like, crumbling it with his hands, guys. This does have curative powers. Breakfast, lunch, reinforcements. This man looked at three people and said, breakfast, lunch, and reinforcements. I'm completely at a loss for words because I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, guys. I, I always have an opinion on, on something, right? But right now, I have no idea how to even approach this situation. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> of course. Of course. Eat his face. Eat his entire face. All of it. Eat his entire face. He made his decision to just go away. I mean, I get it. Why would you want to continue the pain of, of, of living in this existence? This existence is absolutely horrific. Wow. Guys, that ending was odd. <laughs> I, listen, honestly, the whole time I felt like that woman, she definitely knew something was going on. Didn't want to say anything, right? Um, and at the end of it, she kind—I think she kind of knew. She kind of, she kind of immediately knew that maybe she wasn't wrong. Or no, 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 maybe, maybe Boyd wasn't wrong, right? Um, that could be a thing, right? But now let's let's actually start from the beginning. Okay, so what the movie was about, right? So in the beginning of the movie, we start out they're obviously going through the Mexican American kerfuffle, right? And uh, this guy Boyd is basically being called a coward because he did not decide to, uh, you know, be deleted with the rest of his, um, you know, crew, let's say, right? And um, so he, guys, so he then basically, you know, gets awarded for it. He gets sent to California and then that's when everything happens. We find out that, so then we find out that the guy that we have been following is kind of one of the people that like the consumption of, of, of people. Right. Uh, okay. Then, miraculously, a guy comes to the window um, within the first one or two days uh, that he arrives in California, and uh, he says this ridiculous story leads people into a trap so they can be consumed. <laughs> the movie was great. Um, it has its moments, obviously. Um, there were some slow moments, and then the whole scene of, of Calhoun taking them to the cave. Honestly, it was a little genius, guys. I love the comedic timing of the fact that the guy woke up being licked upon. <laughs> that was interesting, right? Then also the comedic timing of all the drama happening and then all of a sudden the cutscene happens, right? And uh, super whimsical music. Then you see the guy being chased up the mountain. Um, one, of the, one of the guys, the guy with the, the blonde hair and the blue eyes, he decides to... Uh, have his life extinguished. I, what I didn't understand, though, was one part where um, when he and Boyd both fell down uh, into that hole, right? Why was he trying to extinguish Boyd? Boyd was saying, bro, don't do this. We should probably leave. We need to leave, right? Um, <laughs> so that was one thing that was somewhat concerning to me, confusing to me, more like. But, um, Overall, I do think the movie was filmed very well. I have really nothing negative to say. The ending was probably one of the most interesting endings. I don't know why Boyd decided to go out like that. Um, he could have just been done with it, right? He's just done. I don't want to be. I don't want to deal with this anymore. There's obviously no way that that um, Wendigo could be basically stopped, right? The only way to stop it is through deletion. Right, extinguishing. So that's the reason why, most likely, he knew that he. <clears throat> that's the reason why, most likely. But he also knew at the end, um, if he would have actually consumed the other guy, Calhoun, then Wendigo would have lived on. But in all actuality, the general walks into the building, sees food cooking, proceeds to do what? Eat a human. Okay, <laughs> so. So yeah, so there we go. So it looks like your your your, your deletion really was for nothing but yourself, I guess. Kind of. I mean, well, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Your deletion really didn't do anything. Really, it stopped one or two or three. It stopped three of these bandigos, right? But it still bred new ones because the food was there, right? So overall, um. I would definitely suggest this movie to people who have not seen it. Um, it definitely feels like uh, the beginning of like a cult, um, like, like a cult classic style of movie. It feels like that. 
Um, it's very graphic. It's very gory. It's very uh, <laughs> in your face with the graphic and goriness, guys. Um, but overall, I do think the movie was very good, perfectly uh, uh, placed for exactly the time of year we are in. It definitely, this should definitely fall under horror. Um, absolutely. All right. Just based off of the gore. Yeah, so just let me know in the comments the next movie we should be watching. And I will get into that, um, you know, movie, at least one movie a week, guys. Sometimes we'll do two, depending on um, how much time I actually have, right, to do said movie. Right, but um, yeah, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy it thoroughly, all right?